during the entire trial, Trump could often be seen closing his eyes, sort of slouching in his seat, really looked like he was sleeping, clearly sending a message that he would not be bothered by this trial. He didn't consider this significant. An attack on a political opponent, that's all it is. Donald Trump is the first U.S. president to face criminal charges. I've been at the courthouse for the last several weeks helping cover this historic trial. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Those charges are related to an episode in 2016 when Trump paid off Stormy Daniels, a pornographic film star, to cover up an affair. A key moment for me was Michael Cohen's testimony. Cohen is a lawyer who was Donald Trump's fixer. When I got there, it was definitely more crowded, and there was definitely a sense that this was the pinnacle of the trial. There was this dramatic confrontation in the courtroom when Michael Cohen came to testify of you know, the former fixer turning on his boss. And he walked jurors through how exactly he paid Stormy Daniels $130,000, and then how he and Donald Trump worked to cover it up. Mr. Cohen has acted like he is above the law. Stormy Daniels was definitely another key witness. She gave the most salacious testimony in the trial about you know a sexual encounter that she and Trump had in 2006 and was able to recount in vivid detail about what happened. Even though the story has been out there for many years, the level of detail that prosecutors went into was still quite striking. When Stormy Daniels testified, Trump was shaking his head. He was muttering under his breath. He was actually reprimanded by the judge. You know, it's not something that a lot of people are used to seeing. It was clearly testimony that was getting under his skin. The other key moment, I think, was the first witness who testified, and that was someone named David Pecker, who was the CEO and basically the top editor at a tabloid publication called the National Enquirer. And he gave key testimony about how he would buy the rights to damaging stories and then not publish those stories out of an agreement with Trump. He is not someone who has spoken publicly, I think, at all. To hear him describe the agreement he had with Trump, his understanding of the practice, why he was doing it, how he actually did it, was very, very striking to hear.